Good morning. Dia de los Muertos is celebrated in Mexico and all over the world on November 1st and November 2nd. It is a tradition that originates from Aztec beliefs and rituals. Day of the Dead is a celebration of life, death, and the transition into eternal life. We remember our loved ones and participate in joyful celebration during these days. According to Mexican tradition, people die three deaths. The first death is when our bodies cease to function, when our heart no longer beats of their own accord, when our gaze no longer has depth or weight, when our space we occupy slowly loses its meaning. The second death when, comes when the body is lowered into the ground, returned to Mother Earth, out of sight. The third death is the most definitive death is when there is no one left alive to remember us, and our names are said for the very last time. Day of the Dead is a celebration that allows us to escape the third death, living forever in the memories of our loved ones. Join us in celebrating Day of the Dead by taking a moment to remember our loved ones who have passed on to their eternal life. Our school community, our school community altar is located in the hallway downstairs. It honors the many people that we love and hold close to our hearts. Perhaps say a silent prayer as you walk past the altar and take a moment to fill your heart with gratitude for this beautiful day. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning. As we gather together and begin November, which is the month of the poor souls in purgatory, we pray for our our brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, all of our ancestors from our families and also for those, all those who have died, especially those who have no one to pray for them. And they have no no more families or friends here on earth. We pray that they 
be purified in their love and that they go to heaven. And so let's call to mind God who loves us so much and who gives us his mercy and wishes for us to be with him forever in heaven. And let us pray for the forgiveness of our sins, which blocks us from really having a total love of God and neighbor. You are the God of the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. You call us to be in the parade of perfection that leads to heaven, which is paradise. Christ, have mercy. You accept our prayers, all of our times that we experience pains and problems and we suffer here on earth, and all the times that we do good works in charity for others, you take those prayers and and they help the, all the dead in purgatory to get to heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who will that your only begotten Son, having overcome death, should pass over into hell, heaven. Grant that our beloved dead, we pray, may overcome all of their sins and that they may look upon your faith as their creator and redeemer as they reach their heavenly home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. My beloved, obedient as you have always been, not only when I am present, but all the more now when I am absent. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for God is the one who for his good purpose works in you both to, the, both to desire and to work. Do everything without grumbling or questioning that you may be blameless and innocent. Children of God without blemish, in the midst of crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine like lights in the world, as you hold on to the word of life, so that my boast for the day of Christ may be that I did not run in vain or labor in vain, but even if I am poured out as libation upon the sacrificial service of your faith, I rejoice and share my joy with all of you, in the same way, you also should rejoice and share your joy with me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the lovingness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I so love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. There is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear much fruit that will remain forever, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is my commandment. Love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
boys and girls, as we begin the month of November, we start off with the month on the first day of November, which was Sunday. And we remember all of the saints, those whose names we know and who are very popular to us, like uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary, she's a saint. Okay. Saint Joseph, he's a saint. Okay. We remember uh, saints like Saint Francis of Assisi. We remember the saints like Pope John Paul II, like Saint Mother Teresa. We remember all of the saints. But then there are many, many, many holy men and women whose names we don't know we'd have to actually go in the history books and we'd have to look up all the various different saints because there are many of them. And the second day in November, we remember all those who have died. And we pray that they who have died, that their love would be perfected. Because most people, when they die, like if I died right now, okay, I, I would not have perfect love. There are some things in my life that need to be corrected. There's some feelings I have uh, about not liking some people. And there's things in my life that now I need to correct, you know? Like eating ice cream bars. I like to eat ice cream bars, but you know, then they're not good for me because I have diabetes. Mm -hmm. But I love candy bars and I love ice cream bars, you know, and I shouldn't be eating them, you know? And I think that you can think of things that you do that you shouldn't do, right? Is that true? I think everybody. So we try to correct those things in our lives with God's help. He, tries, he gives us always help to be uh, loving people, to do the right thing, you know, say the right words, but and to love everyone, even those people that we don't like. We can love them. And as I said, most people, they die and they have not a perfect life. It's just not perfect, you know? So, what do men mean by perfect? You know how your mothers and fathers, they may wear a wedding ring? Um, who has a wedding ring on? Mr. Chuck, you want to come on up here with the wedding, your wedding ring? Uh -huh. So, Mr. Chuck has a wedding ring. So hold it up and let them see us how nice and gold it is, okay? Now that wedding ring is a sign that Mr. Chuck is married. And it looks like gold. It looks like gold. 
But if Mr. Chuck takes that off and he looks inside the wedding ring, he'll find out that it's not all gold. It's not all gold. What does it say in there? It's, it's worn out. Is it worn out? Yeah. It's, it's been there a while. Oh, no, it's there. It's there, buddy. <laughs> Who's got real good eyes? Who's really, no. Teachers. Teachers. Who's got good eyes? No teachers have good eyes. Good eyes. They, okay, how many carrot? How many carrot? Ten. Okay, so this, this ring, okay. How many carrots are in this ring? Hold up for the boys and girls. It looks like pure gold, but it's only 10 karat gold. That means that all, this ring only has 10% of gold in it. That's what that means. All the rest that makes up the other 90% are different metals because pure gold is not good to make wedding rings out of, because pure gold bends, and you don't want your wedding ring to bend. So while it looks like it's gold, it's not gold totally. It needs 90 more percent to get to being gold. Thank you very much. Those who are in heaven are 100% holy. Those in heaven, they all are 100% loving. Those in heaven are 100% charitable, okay? If I died right now, as I said, I'd be probably like 10% gold. <laughs> but I would need to get the other metals out of my life. So, you know how you do that? You put it under a lot of heat. A lot of heat. And then the other metals melt, separate from the gold, and then there's the pure gold. Okay? And so for us, we should try our best to live a loving life here on earth, to love everyone, to always do the right things, to follow God's commandments, to say the right things, to be perfect. And we usually slowly grow into those beautiful ways of life. We call that, uh, us big people call that developmental stages. Especially your teachers know that if from the real young students, they will go through developmental stages to become big people. Mm -hmm. Well, 
we're supposed to be doing that on earth but most of us don't doesn't doesn't get to 100 percent so there's another stage after we die where our our love our lives are purified it's a developmental stage after after death we call it purgatory purgatory means from the latin to purify to purify to get to 100 percent gold 100 percent loving 100 percent good and then when we're 100 percent loving that we're purified and we're 100 percent good then the next stage of life is eternal life forever so during the month of november we remember those saints and right at the beginning who were 100 percent are 100 percent perfect and they offer us a model of being perfect they're in heaven those who are in purgatory they've died and they have to be in the developmental stage of purgatory which purifies their love makes them perfect because in heaven the saints are with god and god is perfect and all the saints are perfect okay does that make sense to you so we have to here on earth live our life trying to get the metal out of the gold but if we don't get all the metal out of the gold which is our lives we have golden lives but there's a lot of metal that keeps us down okay. that what happens is that after we die there's another developmental stage so that we could grow and we can grow and be purified of all of the less precious metals and meddlings <laughs> that we do so that what happens is our love then gets perfected it gets purified huh? and we can live in heaven forever because heaven is where everyone in heaven has a perfect life it's perfect they have perfect love okay. so that is why we have this book here this book here it has the names of every single person that died between november 1 2019 to november 1 2020. it's here because we are praying that all these people who died that their the gold of their life 
that it becomes pure gold. Pure gold. Perfect gold. And that if they're in that purifying developmental state called pure purgatory, uh, that they will be helped by our prayers to become perfect in their love, perfect in their lives, and then go to heaven. Does it make sense to you? Mm -hmm. That's why we should always pray for the dead so that their lives would be purified, make perfect, and that they could move from this life through being purified in purgatory and then live the perfect life, the purified life, the perfect love in heaven. And those are the ones that we call saints. So let's all stand and continue our prayer to the Lord. For all candidates studying for the priesthood and diaconate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all elected officials that they will meet the needs of those they represent, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in all our communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those dealing with loss from wildfires and hurricanes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safe return of all troops, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today, uh, and the next few days, let's pray for all those who are counting ballots because the count of all of the votes of the people of our country have not been complete yet. And so there are many, we don't know who's the president yet. So let's pray for all those people that are counting and that they might count correctly, and then we'll find out who all the people of the United States huh, that, that at least over 50% of them have elected our president, because right now we don't know. You could stay up all last night and you still don't know. <laughs> So for that, let us pray to the Lord. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord.
Let us stand and pray, my sisters and my brothers in baptism, that this holy offering we bring to this holy altar might become the sacrifice which is acceptable to God, our almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, for our beloved dead, that they may be purified and taken up into the glory of heaven with your Son, in whose great love we are all united through this sacred mass who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For even though by our own sins and faults we perish, we die. Yet by your compassion and grace, you purify our lives that are seized by death according to our sins. And you make them perfect through the redemption of your Son Christ, the great victor, with him, you call us to eternal life in the joys of heaven. And so with the powers of heaven, all the angels and saints, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your glory, we claim without end. Blessed be Jesus, whom you sent to be the friend of children and of the poor. He came to show us how we can love you, Father, by loving one another. He came to take away our sins, which keeps us from being friends, and hate which makes us all unhappy. He promised to send us the Holy Spirit to be with us always so that we can live as your loving, perfect children. God, our Father, we now ask you to send your Holy Spirit to change these gifts of bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The night before he died, Jesus, your son, showed us how much you love us. When he was at supper with his disciples, 
He took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And so, loving Father, we remember that Jesus died and rose again to save the world. He put himself into our hands to be the sacrifice we offer you. Lord our God, listen to our prayer. Send the Holy Spirit to all of us who share in this sacred meal. May the Spirit bring us closer together in the family of the Church, with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, Curtis, our retired Bishop, and all your people. Remember, Father, our families and our friends, especially Lori, and all those who have died. Bring them home to be living with you in perfect love forever. Gather us all together in your kingdom. There we shall be happy forever with the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, who all good and holy husband Joseph, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, the martyrs who gave and shed their blood in love for you, Saint Anthony, and all the saints. They're all the friends of Jesus the Lord will sing a song of joy. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us stand and pray as the Savior has commanded us and has taught us. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from our sins and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us bow to one another. Don't touch one another, but just bow and give the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us stand and pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that our departed dead, for whom we have celebrated this holy sacrifice of the Mass, may pass over into the perfect dwelling place of your light and eternal peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. And with your through the prayers of the Holy Mother of God, together with all the saints, especially St. Charles Borromeo, who began the seminary system throughout the world in the 16th century. He was the Bishop of Milan, Milan and the Cardinal of the Church. May the Lord bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by the way we live. Have a blessed day, keep safe, wash your hands for 20 seconds. That's as long as the Our Father. You can sing, say the Our Father and make sure you have soap and warm water and wash your hands and pray the Our Father because the Our Father only takes 20 seconds uh, to uh, pray. Wear your mask and keep good social distancing, okay? Because there's a lot of people getting sick, especially now that we have flu season and it's colder and we're staying inside more, okay? And pray for one of my very, very loving friends who lives in Poland. And he has a number of very difficult uh, uh, problems with his health. And he's in the hospital with COVID now. So please pray for Father John. He has visited here a number of times uh, from Poland. He used to be stationed in Rome uh, uh, during the time of uh, Pope John Paul II, Saint, uh, Saint John Paul II.
Good morning. We would like to thank our sixth graders for leading us so beautifully in the Mass this morning. And thank Mrs. Baldwin for leading our music this morning. And to all of you for participating in the Mass. Just want to do a couple of little reminders. <coughs> Excuse me. We want to make sure that when we come to Mass, because what a privilege we have to be able to come to Mass. You know, as I was sitting there and listening to Father speak, I just thought, wow, what a beautiful gift that God gives us, that we're able to come into the cathedral and have Mass. So when, when Father says, the Lord be with you, what is your response? Okay, now, teachers and adults, I'm going to ask you not to respond because we're not the only ones in Mass. All of our students are. And students, you're here to learn, correct? Yes, ma'am? And so we want to make sure that we're teaching you so that when you're not with us and you go to Mass, that you're responding. So when Father says, the Lord be with you, your response is, because I couldn't really hear you today, and you know, maybe you were saying it in your hearts, but we want to make sure that as Father is speaking, that we're listening. So he knows that you're listening when you respond. So let's try that one more time, and let me just show you. Father says, the Lord be with you, and your hand comes out and, and with your spirit. Back to Father, right? Because we're saying also to you. So let's try it. Is everybody ready? Uh, I, I usually need a response. Is everyone ready? Okay, so the Lord be with you. That was much better. So... We have this wonderful privilege to be able to come into Mass every week. Let's not take that for granted. We want to make sure that when we're in Mass, that we're also, and we're going to practice this now as well, when you put your kneelers down, don't kick it down with your feet. Lean over, get it with your hand, and place it down quietly. So let's all try that, because I heard a whole bunch of kneelers slamming down. And the church is old, but we want to take care of it. So let's try putting the kneelers down. Ah, that's like a D. I'm hearing a whole bunch of clunking down. That means you're not taking your time. Okay? And then when you put them back up, you use your hand, again, you lean down and you put them back up with your hand. We have to take care of the things that we have and we want to take care of our beautiful basilica because we are, once again, so privileged to worship here every week. So we're going, and teachers, I'm going to ask you to help, with, help me with this in your religion classes, and not just in religion classes, but in all of your classes where the response, practicing some of the responses. So when Father says one of the responses, we can answer back with conviction because we are speaking about our faith. So can everyone work on that this week? Thank you, that was pretty good. And we don't, we don't have any of our um, awards for this week, so teachers and students, if you would please continue to send in your nominations for our Mother, uh, St. Mother Teresa Awards, we would definitely appreciate that. So once you, we're going to go back to class and use that time once again to 
speak to Jesus in your hearts as you go back to class and make the choice to have a wonderful Wednesday. Okay.